Welcome to Train Signal. You're watching Active Directory Lightweight Directory Services 101. And if that isn't a mouthful, I don't know what is. And again, this is just a primer on Active Directory LDS, Lightweight Directory Services. So we're going to go through the theory and get you a basic foundation so you understand what it is and what it's for. In this video, we're going to take a look at what is ADLDS and then what it might look like on a network if you're actually running it. And then, of course, we're going to talk about a very important word called an instance. And this is a pretty key element to AD Lightweight Directory Services. So let's go ahead and jump on into it. What is it and why would we ever need it? All right, here's the deal. Uh, ADLDS, basically it was formerly known as Atom, by the way, in previous versions of server ap Active Directory Applications mode. And what it is now, it's a server mode role that provides lightweight directory access protocol services. Now, by the way, what this is primarily for is for people to log in and authenticate with, all right? And here's really one of the keys. If you have an application that requires LDAP to work, well, then you need to install it. Otherwise, you probably won't need it, okay? There's a lot of commercial applications out there that require it. Uh, there's a lot of open source web applications that also require it. And they rely on LDAP to authenticate users and also provide permissions to specific aspects of at different applications. There's a wide use for LDAP out there in the big bad world. So uh, this is basically Windows answer to it. Uh, you'll see LDAP running a lot on Linux boxes, a lot with open source applications for it. Now it usually lives on a server that's separate from your domain controllers, okay? Sometimes we'll install Active Directory lightweight directory services on the exact same server that the application that requires it is also installed upon. So just kind of keep that in mind. You may or may not. It can work as a separate box as well, but a lot of times we'll end up installing that application right onto that box. Now, I want to let you know it also can be installed on server core. Uh, that's kind of a nifty little bonus with server core so if you need an LDAP directory if you need an LDAP box and you don't have a full server 2008 box or maybe you don't have the hardware to support it you might want to think about installing it on server core now here's what it might look like on a network here we start off with of course an ADLDS server that's running what we call an ADLDS instance okay I'm gonna to talk to you what an instance is in, ju in just a second and we also have a server over here that's running a network aware application. Now, this particular application, if it needs lightweight directory access protocol services, i.e., again, if it needs LDAP in order to authenticate users with, then we actually store that information on the LDAP box or the LDS box. So, the easiest way to think about lightweight directory services is that really what it is is kind of a very lightweight version of ADDS. Okay? Now remember, you don't have to have ADDS running. It doesn't necessarily rely on it. So there might be a line between your domain controller and an LDS server. You may not even need your domain controller for LDS to work. Now a lot of times we might use the domain controller also along with LDS. All right, so these two guys, they may actually work together in terms of providing the user accounts for an application to work. Most of the time, if that's the case, what you'll do is you'll take the information, the user accounts and all the groups and everything, you'll copy them over to the lightweight directory services server. Now, there's actually a command uh, that will actually allow you to sync those up once that relationship is established. But again, it depends on the application, you know. So everything that I'm telling you, again, remember, is dependent on if you have an application that requires it. If you do not have an application that requires LDAP services, you don't have to worry about this, okay? If you're working in a large company that's very Microsoft-specific, you know, this idea or LDS may never even come across because so many Microsoft-centric applications rely upon Active Directory to do the authenticating and all that good stuff, okay? But this is basically what it might look like. But remember that your server that's running your network-aware application, uh, this server and the application might be installed directly on the server that's running LDS, and that's a situation where I've seen it's actually a fairly common situation, unless, of course, 
the application requires so much RAM and so many resources that running LDS and the application in the same box just isn't feasible for that particular situation. Now, most of the time when you install LDS, that's all you'll need to do because when you install the application, it will create and do whatever else it needs to do with LDS. Okay? Now, I know it seems a little bit abstract, okay? but let me give you a quick example of where you might find this happening. What you might find is you might have a, a, an accounting application running over here. And let's say it's an open source accounting application or maybe a document management system, which is actually where I've seen this actually implemented. Document management systems are huge, especially in insurance companies and law firms. Well, let's say that that particular document management tool actually requires us to have LDAP services running. And there are several out there. Well, in that case, we're going to make a copy of our directory over here on our ADDS box, our domain controller. We're going to take the information, we're going to keep that information synced up on the LDS server. So basically the LDS is going to have a very lightweight copy of all of our information from the domain controller. Basically a copy of our Active Directory. All the users, groups, and all that good stuff. And then our document management application uses the LDS server in order to authenticate who gets access to what documents and such, okay? Or who gets access to a particular function of the program, you know, whatever that application may require. So let's talk about this big word that kind of, well, it's not really a big word, but it's an important word, an in instance of ADLDS, okay? Now, basically, an instance of LDS is just a running copy of Active Directory lightweight directory services that uses a particular store of data, or essentially, if we're syncing it up with our Active Directory box, maybe we might have a copy of our Active Directory database in it. Now, here's the thing. The reason why you might have an LDS box running is you can have multiple instances, multiple running copies of LDS running on the same server, running on the same box, and Maybe each one of those different LDS instances, each running copy, has its own unique database definitions, its own unique schema definitions. And this is going to be might be required for different applications. Let's say you're running four different applications. And each one of those applications that are very network aware requires very different database definitions from each other. Well, we can still have them all running on the same box, just as different instances and all those instances are might be customized for the very specific application requirements that each one may have now there's some management tools I just want to mention to you here real quickly uh, add edit we've seen this one actually in this course already when we were creating the fine-grained password policies uh, we'll use that event viewer event viewer still works fine with it but tell you what most of the tools that we're going to be using like NTDS util ldifd which I mentioned briefly, but really didn't get into. Uh, DSDBD util, uh, DSAxel, DSACLS. <laughs> There's all of these very unique commands. A lot of them also work with Active Directory domain services, but a lot of them you'll use specifically for LDAP. Okay, so with LDS, you're going to be doing a lot of stuff at the command level. Now, one thing to kind of keep in mind also is that. Most of the time, if you have an application that requires LDS, that requires lightweight directory services, you won't need to do a lot of the work. Okay? The application will do the work for you most often. All right, so I just want to do a really quick summary here. Again, this is just a primer on what you might need uh, to get started with this. Also, uh, just to kind of give you an idea of what might be covered on the exam, you might want to do a little more study in this area. ADLDS, Active Directory Lightweight Directory Services, is a server role that allows LDAP services. You only will need it for applications that require it, though. Okay? You don't need Active Directory domain services for it, although it can work with Active Directory domain services, just so you know, but it doesn't have to. Okay? It's not reliant upon directory services. It's not reliant upon having a domain controller. You may have a lightweight directory services server out there with absolutely no Active Directory services running in your network at all, especially if it's a very isolated network. Maybe you, all that you're using your network for is for a very specific application. Maybe you're not using it to authenticate users at all. Maybe it's a very small network. 
Uh, now, when you install Active Directory LDS, you also need to create an instance of LDS, a running copy. Okay, and you remember you can run multiple instances of AD LDS on a single box, and most of the tools you're going to use for are command line based. There's a couple that have a GUI like ANSI Edit and LDP.exe, but again, most of the work that's going to be done in the instance of Lightweight Directory Services is probably be done by the application. So that's LDS in a very small nutshell. I know it's kind of a, a quick shot in the arm, and it's probably going to be something you'll probably want to do a little more study on in terms of certification. Again, it's not something you might ever see in any given network, especially if all of your applications utilize Active Directory domain services rather than lightweight directory services. Coverage on the exam in this particular area is going to be pretty small. Uh, it's actually wrapped into a section that's only 9% of the entire exam. Okay, but it is something that you do need to at least know about and be aware of. All right, well, that wraps this one up. We're going to do one more quick certification primer video here. We're going to talk about rights management services in the next one. So I'll see you there.